Look what I have. You know what this is? You know what this is. I, I, I posted stuff on Instagram and Twitter about this. I've been talking about this all year. It's the VR Go Backpack from Zotac. It is finally here. Look at it, there's even a retail box. Look at that. I better be able to do that move that that guy's doing with, with this product. Otherwise it's, otherwise it's false advertising, Zotac. Just saying. So basically, if you guys have no idea what this is, it's essentially at its core, a gaming desktop PC. Um, particularly one that you can throw on your back using this contraption here, which is basically just some backpack straps that uh, fixes to the back of that. I'll show you a little demo on that later. But you can wear this on your back um, for a VR experience. And the reason why that's necessary is because with a headset, with a VR headset, an HMD, you've got a big ass tethered cable coming from the back of it that needs to plug into your gaming PC, which is you know usually on a desk or somewhere further away from you. Um, and that causes a lot of annoyances with your feetsies because that you get tangled up in that cord, the cord gets wrapped around you, you gotta kick it off. It's really distracting in game and it brings you out of the whole immersive experience, which is what VR is all about. So this has been a, a challenge Challenge that vendors have been trying to find a solution for for quite some time ever since VR became a thing and this is Zotac's first response with the VR Go. So we're gonna be taking a closer look at it today. I'm pretty excited actually. I did get to try out the prototype at uh, Computex but I've never tried out the retail version that we have here. So it should be fun. Now the MSRP on something like this doesn't come cheap. There isn't too much competition in this market as of yet. And this is packing some pretty heavy specs, I will admit. So the MSRP you're gonna be looking at is 2000 USD. Yeah, that's, that's, that's quite a pretty penny, even for the specs that are in here. But that said, you are getting something very unique. You're getting a very unique type of functionality that you really can't find in too many other places. So you are sort of paying for that exclusivity of a feature. Now, as far as specs go, we've got, uh, like I said, we're packing some heat here. We've got a Core i7 uh, Skylake Platform 6700T, and that's a quad core chip. Uh, we've also got a GTX 1070. That's a fully fledged desktop GPU, no mobile graphics here. Um, so that's gonna be doing some damage and, and bear in mind, like. Look, look, look at this. The, the, the straps are off. With the straps off, it just looks like a small form factor gaming PC. And that's totally what it is when you take off the strap. So even if you're not hugely into VR, maybe you've got a VR headset and you want to dabble with it. But at the end of the day, this can still be used to do some AAA gaming at, you know, max settings, more or less. So that's actually pretty sweet. Granted, you can also go completely cordless if you wanted to. Not that I don't know why you would if, unless you were doing VR. But you've got a pretty intense battery system here. I'm gonna get back to that though. I'm gonna continue on with the specs. We've got 16, 16 gigs of RAM. Actually, give me a second to flip this over and I can show you the internals. So here's the back plate that I just removed with five or six little uh, Phillips head screws that came off uh, very easily. And that gives us access to our internals here. Unfortunately, we can't see our CPU or GPU. They're actually on the other side of the PCB there, but we do see uh, our, our RAM. So we've got two uh, eight gig sticks. These are SO DIMMs, DDR4, 2133 megahertz, I believe, uh, giving us a total of 16 gigs here. Um, um, on the DRAM side of things. Of course, this is expandable. If 16 gigs doesn't tickle your fancy, you wanted to upgrade that to 32, maybe 64. I don't know if it supports 64, maybe it does. Don't quote me on that, but you can definitely do 32 if you wanted to, um, then you are free to do that quite easily as well. Uh, you've also got an M.2 slot here with a pre-installed SSD. You get 240 gigs right there. It is preloaded with Windows 10 64 bit. It is the M.2 interface once again, but not the PCIe NVMe protocol. Unfortunately, it's using SATA, so it's not gonna be quite as fast as something like you know, a 960 Pro uh, from, from Samsung or anything like that, but it is probably gonna help keep costs of this unit down overall. And then finally, you get a two and a half inch drive bay. So this is empty. This is for you to fill up if you wish to. Uh, you can install either an SSD or a two and a half inch mechanical drive right there for expanded storage and stuff. So moving back over to the front here, um, I did want to point out that the enclosure for the most part is made out of this kind of hard plastic and it's uh, it's actually fairly durable. It, it seems like, I mean, I wouldn't want to drop it on a hard surface by any means, but I think the reason why they went with plastic is just to keep it more lightweight. Um, especially since it's going on your back. So that's good for me. I think this thing weighs around 10 pounds. I can't remember if that's with or without the batteries installed, but you're looking anywhere from like nine to 12 pounds, I would say. We're gonna find out once I actually strap this on and do some games, if that's too heavy for my liking. But uh, we'll get back to that in a sec. So that's, that's the enclosure for the most part. It does have some ample ventilation on, uh, on these side, on the front here, as well as on the side. 
So um, we're also gonna fire up hardware monitor when we start gaming, and I'm gonna be testing the thermals in this guy because I'm curious to see um, if this, if the cooling solution in here is, is adequate as well. Now, as of now, you can kind of see that we're sort of in the desktop mode of things, right? We don't actually have the backpack straps uh, mounted onto the unit yet. So this is kind of just what you would, this is how you would set it up if you were just using it as a regular PC. And when you're doing that, you don't really need to be cordless as much as when you're playing VR, obviously. So uh, instead of running on battery life, you could just run on the AC core that they provided. There's a, a port on the back, which I'm gonna get to that side in just a sec. So that's all taken care of. But when you are doing a VR experience, when you're in VR and you're playing the game, oh look, the, the battery LEDs on the, on the batteries just lit up. Cool, I'm glad that's working. When you are playing a game in VR and you are gonna be going cordless in, in terms of power, you are gonna be uh, relying on the battery packs. So they've included two of them in the package. You get you get two, you don't have to buy, buy one separately or anything like that. And they basically just slot in to the bays like so. That shit is bay, yo. You can see there's actually the battery LED indicator has two strips running down it because there's two batteries that you can install at a time. So this represents battery one, this one represents battery two, and they light up to indicate the battery light. However, you don't really want to install both batteries at once. Granted, you could, you could definitely do that, and that would theoretically give you more playtime. But the reason why I would leave one out is so that while you're gaming, and this battery starts to drain, eventually when it gets tapped out, right before it dies, you can hot swap this one into this bay here, take this one out and start recharging it and just continue playing uninterrupted. Um, you couldn't really do that if you had both batteries installed and they both died at the same time, you'd be shit out of luck waiting another two hours for those batteries to recharge. So cool little system that they have worked out here. Oh yeah, one more thing. Um, estimated uh, playtime with one of these batteries is supposed to be two hours in game. Um, we're gonna verify that once we actually strap this on and start playing. Moving on to the right side of the system here, you get an assortment of different ports, including your DC, which uh, is where obviously your, your AC power comes from. Headphone and mic jacks, you get, an, you get an SD card reader, four USB 3 ports, display port, actually two display ports and two HDMI. Um, I believe that's HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort 1.4. I'm gonna double check on that though. I'll let you, whoop, sorry, I'll let you know if that is anything different. You also get dual gigabit ethernet LAN as well as a 12 volt DC out. And let's take a look at the top here. Now the top is, uh, is where your headset would go, all right? It makes most sense if you're gonna be using this on your back and you have an HMD strapped to your face, uh, you're gonna want to plug in that tethered cable um, into the top here. It's just a bit easier access. It makes more sense based on where the headset is located. So you get uh, your, your 12 volt DC out here as well, HDMI and two USB 3.0 ports. And they do have these little rubber covers. You don't get any covers for the side there, but you do get them for the top. Um, is there anything that we missed as far as, okay, you get some rubber feet. You get rubber feet here if you're gonna be using it in desktop mode. I'm just gonna call it desktop mode. So it doesn't slip around when you're when you're doing it that way. And you also get more rubber feet at the bottom here when it's standing upright like the monolith from 2001 Space Odyssey. All right, so here we have the backpack strap and uh, I'm gonna go into all the little details that this offers in just a bit when I actually have it suited on. But for now, I'm just gonna strap it on to the back of the device here and show you exactly how that works. They've made it super straightforward and simple, actually. So you get three of these notches, three holes, plus a little slot or a little opening for a locking mechanism. And on the back of the strap, you get three pegs and the locking mechanism right here. So all you do is you kind of line that up, the pegs with the holes, and you lock it into place like so. And to seal the deal, they've given you this, uh, there's a little uh, Velcro door, just opens like that. It's like, it's like assless chaps, all right? And then there's a little dial here to put the locking mechanism into place. Simply close the Velcro door and voila, the shit is not going anywhere. Pretty rock solid, super easy. I like how straightforward it is again. Um, so that's how you strap that on. I think at this point, I'm all ready to boot this guy up. It's already got a battery in there. So why don't we go ahead and do some VR testing. Let's see how this baby flies. So you strap in with uh, these little clips here. They are adjustable. So even if you have a big ass stomach like myself, you should be perfectly accommodated. And then uh, there's a strap up here as well. So I've got the cables from the HMD all coiled up here and there is a spot to put them. There's actually this little stretchy, stretchy pocket thing, stretchy strap. You can just route the cables straight through there. The other um, little stretchy straps are for your HTC Vive controllers. 
So the motion controllers can go in, kind of like holsters. You can see I've got both controllers there. This, by the way, I'm fully aware of how ridiculous this looks. Um, but then again, you are probably gonna be using something like the VR Go inside of your own house, not in public, which I guess makes it a little better. Um, but yeah, it looks totally ridiculous. Function, function is what we're, what we're looking for here today. So now that that's all situated, I can go ahead and put the headset on. Everything is looking good. I can pull out my controllers. Let's just go ahead and play. Ready to rock. Am I gonna be, I'm gonna be facing away from you guys apparently. Sorry. Sorry, I, I know I'm like horrible at this. Uh, so first thing I will say is that the backpack's very comfortable. The straps are, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things where like, you're so immersed in, in something like VR that you kind of forget that you're actually wearing anything. I mean, I'm aware that I'm wearing clothes, of course. I don't think I'm naked right now. But as far as like the backpack, any kind of hardware, it does feel pretty, um, pretty lightweight. You don't notice it too much. The backpack definitely stays on pretty well. Um, oh, I got a shield now. I'll do, I'll do it in this hand, please. Ah! Oh God, what, what is this? I don't remember this thing. Oh, I guess this is like a different kind of shield now. Uh, there, was, there have been some serious updates to this game that I am unaware of. I think I'm dead. All right, so that was my first game. Um, so far, so far so good. Like no problems, it doesn't feel too heavy, which is a good sign. So one issue that I wanted to quickly point out is that I have no idea what the battery life is um, on this backpack right now. I don't know if there's a way that I can see that from within the HMD. So I think the only thing have to, that, that I can do is really take the HMD off and either physically look at the battery LED indicator on the backpack which means I would have to turn it off or maybe or maybe have a mirror, like point, point the backpack towards the mirror and then look over my shoulder and, and look at it that way. So that's kind of a interesting, interesting thing that might need some, some fixing. Um, all right, let's fire up a different game now. Let's go to, wait, what do we got? All right, we're gonna play some raw data. So another thing that I will mention about this experience so far is that uh, the gameplay is super smooth. Um, again, there's a GTX 1070 in here with a Core i7. There are absolutely no stuttering. There's, there's no signs of stuttering or any kind of lag um, that I'm aware of. It's, it's super smooth. Oh my God. What the hell? Good Lord. See, that was, oh, 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 God, what the? Why are they, why don't they have legs? That's creepy as, get the away. Oh shit. Ah! They're too fast! How do you do that? Ah! No! My headset's falling off! Woo! All right, so, um, that was fun. That was honestly just as smooth as, like, my GTX 1080 system that I would use. And after you remove your headset, there's actually a little clip, um, on the left side, on the left strap here, which you can use to lock your headset into place so you don't have to carry it around. Voila, you kind of look like uh, someone in the military, you know, with all this stuff hanging on your on your big ass vest type of thing, but uh, it works. Uh, the gameplay experience again was super smooth. I definitely felt like I was getting that 90 Hertz refresh rate on both eyes. And I think Raw Data is probably the most graphically intensive game that I have that I actually own. So I was, I was pretty happy with how that was uh, performing. If we take a look at the back here, what? Not bad. So we still have, uh, we still have about 80% battery life. If you look at the indicator there, there's five, it's uh, in increments of 20% and we only have one green dot missing. So we still have quite a bit of time. I mean, I was probably only playing for maybe 20 minutes. So, I mean, I guess that kind of adds up. I, I'm not doing math right now, uh, but uh, yeah, it definitely f feels like there's still quite a ways to go for this battery pack, um, which is awesome. So we had a hardware monitor running the whole time while we were gaming and it looks like our CPU, again, the Core i7-6700T, got up to 67 degrees Celsius on the hottest core, 66 C on the package. That's actually not bad. That's actually not bad at all. Uh, let's see how our GTX 1070 did. Oh, wow. 70 degrees. It topped out at 70 degrees C. Guys, that's actually pretty good. I was, I was anticipating high 70s at the very least. So theoretically, you do have some thermal headroom there if you wanted to do some overclocking on the GPU. Uh, you could probably do so, no problem. Just bear in mind that that would shorten the battery life quite a bit. I guess it depends on how much you're overclocking, but uh, obviously dialing in a hefty OC is going to put more strain on the battery. It's gonna require more, more power um, to drive more pixels and higher frame rates and all that. 
but you are going to be seeing significantly reduced battery life. But uh, wrapping things up with some closing thoughts here, um, overall this is a really solid product. I do like it a lot. Performance is top notch. If you want a high end VR gaming experience, this is definitely capable of that. And it's going to be not just good enough for now, but it's going to be able to play the next generation of VR games as well. So that's that's also very key if you're going to be making that initial $2,000 investment. Uh, the hot swap mechanism is totally on point. That was kind of like a make or break thing was like how the battery situation was going to work. But I think overall they, they made the right choice. Also the fact that you can use this as as a regular gaming desktop PC is awesome. It makes it a bit more versatile, a lot more versatile than just if it were like, you know, can only be in backpack mode. That would be kind of a bummer. So I think the one complaint that I did have was that I couldn't really tell what my battery life was un unless I removed the HMD and looked in the mirror behind me, looked over the shoulder. I guess if, if you have someone with you, they can easily tell you, but uh, that's one thing that I would try to find a solution for. The uh, straps work pretty well. I think uh, having a, a good place to hold everything is nice. The, the, I think the cable, the cabling solution could be a little bit cleaner instead of having to wrap your cables up like that. I think there could be a more elegant solution to that, but I, I don't really know what that is at the moment. Um, but for a first run, I think this is, a, this is just really nice. It's a, it's, a, it's a really good product and I would recommend it if you have the budget. But I think on that note, we can go ahead and wrap this video up. So let me know what you guys think of this thing in the comments. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on what you've seen today with the demo. Uh, as well as like the specs and MSRP especially. I want to know, do you guys think it's worth the price? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Have a good one, y'all. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.